All right, guys, welcome back. Um, today we're going to be looking at the cumulative frequency curve. And first and foremost, uh, before we get into it, just a reminder uh, with regards to the graph sheets. Just a reminder to everybody. Uh, when we talk about the graph sheet, remember that the lines, these lines here, are one centimeter apart. So we're just pointing at that out. These lines are one centimeter apart. So if you actually take your ruler and measure the length of that, um, you will see that the lines are actually one centimeter apart. So if you take it here, and you just look at this distance here, this is zero, and this is one here. So the distance be between the two lines here um, would be one centimeter. So just want to reiterate that also, um, going up here, it's one centimeter as well. All right, these lines are one centimeter apart. And then always, always, always in between the lines that are one centimeter apart. So this here is a box, obviously. And it's a square. So it's a one centimeter by one centimeter. But anyway, I'm just ignoring this spot for now. So between every one centimeter line, there is always four thinner lines, right? always four thinner lines and we discussed that in last week's lesson all right always four lines in between the lines that are one centimeter apart even going up this way one two three four one two three four always four lines in between always so we're going to get back to the graph sheet uh, in a little bit but before we actually start using the graph sheet it's important for us to understand what the cumulative frequency curve is all about so Again, our focus today is really on the cumulative frequency curve. And before we actually put it on a graph sheet, we're actually going to be doing a sketch of it and showing you how you actually plot to get this curve. But uh, before we get into an actual example, let's just discuss what the cumulative frequency curve should look like. All right, so I've taken the liberty here of drawing on um, printing paper uh, the horizontal axis here this will be classified as the horizontal axis so I'm just going to make a note that this is the horizontal axis and you guys should know this already um, also called the x-axis at times all right also called the x-axis all right here would be classified as the vertical axis so this will be the vertical axis all right also referred to as the y-axis. So it's very important for us to understand right away um, that just to reiterate, because you guys should know this from quadratic graphs, right? So this is the horizontal axis, also called the x-axis, and this is the vertical axis, also called the y-axis. So x-axis, y-axis, or horizontal axis, vertical axis. Now, the cumulative frequency curve has a characteristics S shape. Now, when I say characteristics S shape, it means it should have a look like this. And I'm going to be pointing out several key things that you must never make mistakes with. So, the cumulative frequency curve has a characteristics S shape. What do I mean? S shape meaning like this. Just a look like that. All right? Kind of look like an S, right? All right? So that is what your cumulative frequency curve will look like whenever you decide or whenever you do a question and actually start to plot, all right? So that's what the cumulative frequency curve should look like. Now, there's a couple of things that you have to remember. One is that the cumulative frequency curve must touch the horizontal axis. It must touch the horizontal axis and also it doesn't necessarily come here all right it doesn't necessarily come here all right so notice that it's coming off the axis here so it doesn't mean it has to come from the intersection intersection of the two axes so just be mindful of that so the cumulative frequency curve has a characteristics s shape and it must touch the horizontal axis, and it doesn't mean coming here. It can come here. So I'm pointing those things out from early. Why? 
because those are the things that students normally make errors with and create problems. All right, so first of all, this is the horizontal axis or x-axis, vertical axis or y-axis. The cumulative frequency curve has a characteristic S shape and the curve must touch the x-axis. doesn't have to come here, but it must touch the x-axis. So it could have come from here, 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 here. It must touch the x-axis. So if you have accumulated frequency a curve, for example, and it stops up here, then you have a problem, right? So it must come and touch this. And I'm going to show you um, how we get it to touch the horizontal axis, right? Also, very important, very, very important. This axis here, when you're numbering it, it must be numbered based on the scale. It must be numbered based on the scale. This axis as well must be numbered based on the scale. Extremely, extremely, extremely important. You don't just start numbering and you don't just start numbering. They give you a scale and request that you follow the scale to normally make your life easier. And I'm sure you've heard me mention that when you're doing quadratic graphs as well. So whatever scale I give you for both axes, make sure that you follow that. Um, you know that you're not getting a paper too, so you won't actually be constructing. However, they could give, they could give you a diagram and then ask you questions based on the diagram. So it's important for you to master it. And of course, when you go to university, you might encounter this again and you might be asked to actually construct this. So you have to be able to do it. So regardless of the fact that you're doing paper one, you should know how to do this. And we have to do the syllabus in completion. So I hope you appreciate that. Now, the next thing that I want to point out is this. When you're numbering particularly this axis here, whatever the frequency is, whatever the total frequency is, or the last value in the cumulative frequency curve is, that is going to represent the top of the curve. Again, this axis here, always, 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 this axis here for the cumulative frequency curve is always going to be uh, the cumulative frequency, always. This is this, the vertical axis or the y-axis is always going to be the cumulative frequency curve. And when you're numbering it, remember, cumulative frequency is different from frequency. Cumulative frequency is different from frequency. And we discussed that in last week's lesson. So I hope you're on the ball with those videos. Now, again, the top of the curve has a lot of significance. So what I would suggest that you do is that when you're looking at the table, remember, the sum of the frequency is the same number that you would have with the last value in the cumulative frequency column. Remember that. The sum of the frequency is the same value as the final value in the cumulative frequency column. Remember, we discussed that. And that should be that value here, which represents the top of the curve. Okay? So this here is always cumulative frequency, not frequency, always cumulative frequency. Remember that we said that they represent the same thing, but the cumulative frequencies are run on total. So the value that is here, that represents the top of this curve, is always the final value in the cumulative frequency column, or, which is the same thing as the sum of the frequency, which means the total frequency. So the total frequency is the same as the final value in the cumulative frequency column, and that should be here, and that represents the top of the cumulative frequency curve. So this will always be, for example, number of packages, number of students, number of plants, those kind of things here. That's what the cumulative frequency is going to represent. Again, here would represent number of students, number of plants, uh, things like number of packages, uh, which re represent the same thing as the cumulative frequency. Down here would be things like weight in kilograms, time in seconds, height in centimeters, things like that that's going to be down here. So I want that to kind of stick into your head. So I'll give you a, a crash course in what the cumulative frequency should look like and what should be on this axis. So this would be number of students, number of plants, number of packages, for example, down here would be 
kilo, uh, weight in kilogram or time in seconds or um, height in centimeter, things like that. And you're going to learn how to actually plot um, these things here, right? Now, one of the things that you're also going to learn is that, let's say, for example, the total number of, um, let's say, this cumulative frequency curve was representing um, the heights measured for plants. And the total number of plants was, for example, 40. So this number up here would be 40 for sure. All right? Now, the, the cumulative frequency now is used to determine or to estimate median. So I'm just going to write that up here. The cumulative frequency curve is used to estimate median along with other things. Now, how do you get median or how do you estimate median? Now, is it is 40 here? 40 when divided by 4, we're going, to get, we're going to get things called quartiles. 40 divided by 4 is 10. So, just giving you a rough idea before we get into an example. So, this would be 10, this would be 20, this would be 30, and this would be 40. Of course, these values would be determined already when you are doing the scale, right? But I'm just giving you a rough idea. So let's say that the, the sum of the frequency is 40, or the final value in the cumulative frequency column is 40, and that represents uh, the total number, for example, of plants that were measured. So you know down here would be height in meter, etc., etc. Right? So the total frequency or the final column in the frequency in the cumulative frequency column must always be here. And I would recommend that you stop there. Sometimes when you're using a scale and you're numbering. You have a tendency to go, okay, so reach 40, and then you go 50, 60, 70. That, that might throw you off eventually. So what I want you to do is to just stop at the number that represents the total frequency or the final value in the cumulative frequency column. You're going to understand clearly when you do an example. Just giving you a crash course now. So let's say this value is 40. Now, to get the quartiles, and quartiles is spelled this way, quartiles. To get the quartiles, we're simply going to divide the 40 by the 4, and we've got 10 apiece. So quartiles, obviously this is 0 down here. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 4 quartiles, right? Now, the median is always, okay, let's, just, let's say we're dealing with plants, right, and their height. So somebody was doing an analysis of the height of plants. So this here would represent number of plants, crash course, as I said number of plants and here would represent the height of the plants and let's say it was in centimeter okay crash course when you're doing an actual example you're going to see clearly what i'm doing but just pick up a few things from now so what we're going to be doing now is showing you after you plotted the graph on graph sheet to show you how you're going to determine or estimate the median weight, or sorry, median height, since we're dealing with heights of plants, so median height. So what we're going to be doing here is the median, it means middle value. If you remember that from previous lessons, median means middle value. Median means middle value. So what is the middle of 40? 20. But 20 is not the median value. We're going to be using 20 to determine the median value. In this case, it will be median height of the plants, the middle height of the plants, right? So how you do that is you have 10, 20, 30, 40, obviously, right? And we've numbered them here. Now, <clears throat> the median height is going to come from the midpoint or the middle of 40, that is 20. So what you do is you use a ruler, find the 20, a lot of, lot of times students say, oh, the median, the median height is 20, but height is down here. So the median height is not 20. You'd be using 20 to get the median height. So what you do is you take a little ruler or you follow the line on the graph sheet, come across here, and then when, you get, when the line touches the actual curve, you come down here vertically, and wherever it touches this point, that value, whatever value is here, whatever value you read, that would be the median height. So we're only using the 20. Why? Because the 20 is half of 40. 
or it would be representing um, what would be used for quartile two to get the quartile two value, right? So that would be the median value here or the median height because they ask you for median height. So the value would be down here. It couldn't have median height up here. It would have to be down here. All right. Now to get quartile one value. So this here would actually be um, using a quartile two, um, quartile two amount to get the, the, the value here for quartile two essentially. So we're basically dividing the top, whatever top, whatever top value here for the curve is we're dividing it by four and then you're actually gonna get four parts, all right? So 20 would not be quartile two value, we'd be using 20 to get the quartile two value and the quartile two value is the same thing as the median. So we find half of 40, carry it across there, bam, whatever reading that is. And remember, you have to be careful when you're reading between the lines here, that would be the um, quartile two value or the median height in this particular case. Now, uh, quickly, Next thing they could be asking us for is the interquartile range. Now the interquartile range is simply quartile three value minus quartile one value. Okay? Now the quartile two value is actually the median time. That's different. This business here is totally different from what we just did with the median value. All right? Sometimes they ask us for interquartile range interquartile range remember this is a crash course just wanting you to pick up on a couple of things right off the bat so to get the interquartile range it will be the quartile three value minus the quartile one value how do we get that remember we said that the 20 here uh, would be quartile two and with, and quartile two is 20 we go down here and get the quartile two value which would be the median height now, the interquartile range is simply equal to quartile three value minus quartile one value. So, quartile three, remember you divide the 40, that's why I said don't go above this. Use a 40 and that represents a top, right? And stop there, don't go any further because it might confuse yourself. So, what you'll be doing here is, in order to determine the quartile three value, right, that will be Quartile three would be the 30, you carry it across to the curve and come down and whatever value is here would be quartile three value. Quartile one value, take the 10, why? Because you divide 40 into four pieces, so if the 20 represents quartile two, then the 10 is quartile one and this is quartile three, you don't count the 40 in it, all right? So to get the quartile one value, which would be using 10, you go across to the curve, come down, and whatever value is here would be the quartile one value. So when you get those two values for quartile three and the value for quartile one, the difference between the two of them will be the interquartile range. And that is how you go about finding the interquartile range. The only other thing they could ask you to find is the semi interquartile range. And a semicircle is half of a circle. So what do you think the semi interquartile range is? just dividing the interquartile range by two. So what, whatever value you get here, divide that by two and get a semi-interquartile range. All right? So again, just a rough, rough, rough sketch and a rough idea of what the cumulative frequency curve is about. Here is a horizontal axis or the X axis. And if you don't get everything, no, that's fine. Just pick up on a couple of things. Just have an idea of where we're going. An idea is what I wanted to get from this video. So this is a horizontal axis or X axis. And this is a vertical axis or Y axis. This axis here is always, once you're doing a cumulative frequency curve, this here always represents a cumulative frequency, which in this particular case, if we're talking about plants or somebody doing the heights of plants this here would represent the number of plants the cumulative frequency would represent the number of plants in this case right here is in this particular case seeing that they're taking the heights of plants this here would be height in whatever units they're asking us for so that would be height right now the cumulative frequency curve has a characteristics s shape 
Okay? So if you're not looking like a S, then you're probably doing something wrong. You don't have to look perfectly like a S like this, you know, but it must have this characteristic shape, right? Not necessarily that, obviously. Just this kind of look of an S. And also, it must touch the S or the cumulative frequency curve must touch the horizontal axis. Not necessarily here, exactly here, but it must be touching the horizontal axis. So if it's not touching, you're not going to get the full marks right if you're asked to do um, a construction of the curve. All right? Now, again, whatever the last value in the table is for the cumulative frequency, and remember, the cumulative frequency is a run-on total, which is different from the frequency, but you use the frequency to get the cumulative frequency, if you remember from the previous lesson. Whatever that last value is, with also of the cumulative frequency column, whatever that last value is must come here, and that value is going to also represent the sum of the frequency, and that is going to represent the top of the curve, which is right here. Do not number past that value going up here. Stop at that value. The last value in the cumulative frequency, always stop at that value. Now, when you divide this value by 4, you get what we call the quartiles. Not the quartile values, the quartiles, because you're going to use the quartiles to get the quartile value, so to speak. So when I divide 40 by 4, I get 10. So that means 10 will be used to get quartile 1 value. How would I do that? Take it across, down, that, was, that is quartile 1 value. 20, so 10 added to 10, give it 20. 20 will be used to get the quartile 2 value, which is also called the median value. How do we do that? Take it across to this, and we're going down to here. We're only getting 10 and 20 because we divide 40 by 4. If it was another value here, it would be something totally different here. Now, the 20 would be using quartile 2 value to get quartile 2 to get the quartile 2 value, and that is also called the median value. 10 to 10 and 20 is 30. Use that to get the quartile 3 value. And remember I said that the quartile 2 value, which is here, is going to represent the median time. And we can use the difference between the quartile 3 value and quartile 1 value to get the interquartile range. And if we, and if we divide the interquartile range by 2, we're going to get the semi-interquartile range. Right? Outside of that, the only thing else I could ask you about is probability, which means you'll be using some value up down here.